so what's Ronnie Monroe been doing these days in music? I see you got a new album. Uh, yeah, it's The Fire Within. That's been out since uh, last March. And, um, you know, sales on that have been pretty well, considering, you know, the downloading age and whatnot. Um, waiting on some upcoming tour dates in July. And as soon as I know about those, they'll be on all my sites for, for the fans to uh, check out. I also uh, have joined a new band in Germany called Brutal Gods which is the bass player from Blind Guardian, the drummer of Rhapsody of Fire, and the guitar player of uh, Gravedigger and also Rebellion. So, Ronnie, how does it work joining a band in Germany when you're in uh, America? Well, actually, I live in Puerto Rico, which is part of America. Okay. But uh, how that works is I just hop on a plane. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm used to doing a lot of flying because of Metal Church and whatnot. And, uh, so I'm going to fly there in May to record the album, and then uh, we're, we're looking at a fall release. And then after that, um, you know, the, the regular, you know, regular scenario. We wait for tour dates, and uh, we go out and support the record, and I just keep going no matter what. Music is my life, and, uh, you know, I, I just keep going. So basically you keep busy every day with, uh, you know, with Internet relations and all that stuff also, you know, to keep, you know, public. Oh, definitely. You know, the, the Internet is a double-edged sword. It's... As far as the downloading thing goes, you know, that sucks. But uh, the, the, the other things that the Internet does bring to, to a musician's career is, uh, is huge. Like you just said, we're able to, uh, to reach thousands of people that, that we normally wouldn't get to reach because of the Internet. So, like I said, it's a double-edged sword. And, uh, but I use the Internet as much as I can to keep my name out there and, and uh, also to find new bands that I like to listen to as well. And also you did a video for... Uh your single, Delirium, you know. Correct, and, and Delirium, now, yeah. And now you got YouTube, you know, basically as the main source of this video. What do you think of those bands now? They're pushing everything on YouTube, and, you know, because MTV's not taking all this music. Well, you know, you're right about that, because, uh, well, MTV, unless you're, unless you're a pop star, you know, you usually won't touch you and whatnot. But, uh, you know, YouTube, I think, is a great thing. I think there's a lot of nonsense on there. But also there's a lot of, it's another great way for bands to get their video seen, as well as uh, there's a lot of video stations out there. Roxwell is one of them. Delirium was uh, number one for a couple of weeks in a row on Roxwell, uh, as well as OurStage.com. So the video's uh, really done well. You know, a lot of people have been able to see it worldwide. And, um, you know, it's, like I said, it's been a great tool. These gigs you're going to be doing in the summer, is it for uh, Ronnie Monroe solo career or Brutal Gods? Uh, no, the, the dates in July will be my solo record dates. And then, uh, uh, like I said, I record with Brutal Gods May through June, and uh, we'll have like a fall release. And after the release, uh, you know, well, first off, after we do it, we're going to figure out whether or not we're going to go with an actual record label or if we're going to put it out ourselves, which because of the Internet, you know, we have that option now. But uh, as soon as we figure that out, well, then we'll be doing two, uh, tour dates. And I'm sure we'll start out over there in Europe. will be our first date. And then uh, we'll see what happens, man. It just depends on how well the record does. But uh, I'm excited and honored to be playing with these guys there in Germany because, as I mentioned, they all come from uh, very well-established bands there in Germany. And uh, myself coming from Metal Church is, is a great thing as well. So I'm sure the band's going to get a lot of attention. And the music is... Uh, it's quite heavy, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It'll go really good with your voice, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm going to do some new things on there. Uh, it'll be, of course, my typical voice, but I'm going to try some different things. You know, I'm going to throw a little gravel in there and, you know, do some different things on choruses. And, you know, it's got, it's got the, the classic sound, but it's also got a bit of a, the newer sound that's out there today. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, you've got a really big vocal range, you know, with considering with the best you match them how long have you been uh, you very much. doing all this stuff you know keeping it healthy and stuff because you on your latest album is still going really strong well thank you bro i appreciate that um you know i just uh i i do try to keep myself as healthy as possible and that does uh prolong the voice definitely but um you know i just i've been saying for a lot of years and um i just keep going as much as i can stay healthy and uh and keep singing.
that's the mainly the key. And I keep writing. I'm writing every day, every day just about. Let's say uh, one night you'd be on tour and you'd not feel good. Uh, does it really take an impact on the voice, or is it still going to be delivered almost 100%? Well, I'll tell you what, um, out on the road, there we do have our times, you know, depending on the weather or just even getting, co a, you know, a cold from some from someone, from shaking hands or whatever it is, you know, but regardless if I'm sick or healthy, I go out and try to give 100% regardless, but uh, some nights are tougher than others, and uh, but one thing I've been lucky is I've never had to cancel a gig because of being sick. Um, you just kind of go out and you adapt your voice. Sometimes the notes aren't there as much as they are, so I go to a lower register. But if you if you know what you're doing and you've been doing it as long as I have, you know how to adapt to still try to deliver the best performance possible. I take pride in my performances. I can see just that. Just as much, just you know, most musicians do. So, is your uh, tool your instrument? Exactly. You really got to take care of it. Now, metal church is no more, and you know. Whose big decision was this to finish Metal Church? Well, you know, norm normally, normally I just kind of take the plead the fifth on that, but uh, really the honest truth on that one was uh, that was Vanderhoof's decision. Because it wasn't that a big working machine at one time, you know? Well, it really was, and you know, the the history of Metal Church really, uh, as we all know, that Metal Church Kurt Vanderhoof quit Metal Church back in the height of their career. Although he stayed on and was the main writer, he wrote all the material, you know, for every record Metal Church has ever ever done. But, uh, you know, I, I joined the band in 2004. We reformed Metal Church, did three records, and uh, it just got to the point again for Kurt that, um, you know, he didn't want to do it anymore. So I had no choice but to respect his decision. And, uh, you know, of course, we're still great friends. We talk just, just about every day. And... You know, there is still some things in the works. There's a live record. We have a whole, whole, you know, there's there's boxes of material from live recordings that we've done and uh, some video and stuff. So within the near future, I would say within the next year to two, we're going to have some uh, a live record put out. I'm not sure when, but uh, we'll let everyone know. But as of right now, yes, Metal Church is no more. But I, I myself, as Ronnie Monroe, will continue on solo and uh, with Brutal Gods, and uh, keep doing what I love to do. Now, Ronnie, i seen another thing on your uh, MySpace site. You got a song, because I didn't get your full album yet, but I've uh, been playing your singles, Man on the Silver Mountain. Now, this is an incredible interpretation of it, you know, from the Rainbow Classic. Well, thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. You know, when you, when you set out to do a song like that, um, you know, it's a ballsy move. A lot of people as well told me that. Because you know, usually when you're copying someone great like Ronnie James Dio, or at least in trying to do your own interpretation of it, you're really going out on a limb. And and I'm happy with the result. Um, I think it turned out well. Of course, it's nothing like the original version, but I just wanted to pay homage to one of the greatest vocalists ever, and he happens to be a great inspiration to me. So well, I'm glad you like it. Ronnie James Dio, I'm sure would approve. Did he even hear it? Uh, well, I'm not sure. I, but I, if he does hear it, I would really hope that he would like it. Well, I'm sure. And uh, who's playing on this album? Because I've I've listened to the songs and uh, you know the instrumentation. Um, well, I had a few uh, guest players and whatnot, but uh, majority of the songs were written by myself and Rick Van Zant, which was the newest guitar player of Metal Church on the last album. And Rick was my guitar player in the band uh, Rottweiler back in 2002 when I played Bakken for the first time. So we had Rick, uh, Kurt Vanderhoof played a couple rhythms on the, but he mostly engineered and produced. Um, I was fortunate enough to have uh, Michael Wilson of Queenswife play a couple solos. Um, he actually played on Across the Sea of Souls and what, what You Choose to Call Hell, I Call Home. And then uh, Tony Nichols from the band Malaya Rage wrote three songs. He wrote the music for Across the Sea of Souls, What You Choose to Call Hell, and deafening hypocrisy, and uh, the rest of the stuff was done, you know, by, uh, my, like I said, myself, Rick Van Zant. We had a friend of mine, Johnny Ringo, on drums and whatnot, and, uh, you know, like I said, Kurt played a little bit, and that's about it. Now, recording process to this stuff, did you guys go all out, you know, in a big studio, or is this more, you know, Pro Tools style? Um, there's a lot of Pro Tools stuff on there, you know, it's uh, basically... Uh, you know, 
with the way, uh, because of the internet, things like that, and, and this, well, all the things that we have at our fingertips these days, I figured, uh, you know, everyone else is doing it. Let's see what it sounds like. And, of course, uh, it's not exactly like tape, of course, but, dang, it's, it's really close now, the sounds that you can get. Yeah. And, of course, with the budget that I had, um, you know, this was not a huge budget. I, I did it with, uh, with Kurt Vanderhoof, like I said. And, um, you know, so it made it easier on me, and the result was, was, uh, was great, I think. For, for my first record, I'm very happy with it. But on the next one, which I'm already writing for the next record, um, you know, I think I'm going to try something different. Uh, probably not tape. I'll probably probably go with Pro Tools. But uh, I'm going to try some different things recording-wise. And uh, for your solo band that's going to be touring this summer, who is this? Is it going to be the same guys, mostly? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, the guys from a band out of Houston, Texas. They're, yeah, it's Azriel's Bane. Good, good friends of mine, and they're the ones that have been doing my dates with me. And... Uh, it's Azriel's Bane, basically, three of those guys, and, and one guy named Mike Heald on guitar, which is a, pretty much an unsung hero. He, uh, he gives guitar lessons there in Houston, and the guy plays every instrument, you know, and he's a, he's a virtuoso. I'm, I'm very lucky to have all these guys, great guys and a great band. So it's good that you're bringing out other people on tour, and this is going to be good for them. Oh, it is going to be good for them. And you know what I, uh, I strongly, strongly believe in that, that, you know, I've got a lot of friends over the years that I've made from playing, and... And uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to be able to give guys a chance and have not been able to get that chance that they deserve. So that's why I like to do that. It's easy for me to go out, of course, and get name players and, and whatnot. But, uh, you know, as long as the guys can play well and I get along with them, I like to give people a chance when I can. And so far it's worked out really well. Because at that moment it gives the other people finally a name. Well, yeah, and, I, and that's, like I said, that, that makes me feel good. And, you know, I like, like I said, I like to give people a chance because it was Kurt Vanderhoof that gave me the chance to get to the next level. So if I, can, if I can pass it on to someone else, well, then, like I said, it makes me feel good and makes me feel like I've helped someone else. That's awesome stuff, Ronnie. Uh, I wish you only success in your career, and I uh, really appreciate the time for this interview. Not a problem. Thanks for having me, man. All right, take care. Bye-bye.